When cutting brittle material on your Titan with your finger bit, you may experience breakage or blowout. If you use Auto Breakout, you can reduce this. I'll show you how to do that today in Did You Know It, Dan? I'll start by preparing this geometry. I'll choose Explode to explode the perimeter, and now I can choose Join to join the common cut edges back together. And it looks the most efficient to window all the lines and arcs making up the wall scribe and finish to join them. And then I'll repeat the join command and use a crossing window to select the front three edges with the radius corners before I finish. Next I'll create my material blank, which more than likely will be a rectangle. So I'll use an enclosing rectangle. And I'll make a window to select all edges to enclose. And since I need the material blank to be larger than my part, I'll offset it about 3 16 or 0.188. I'll choose to offset all geometry, and I can even select Delete Original to save a step. And then I'll select my geometry and click to the outside to make it larger. And now I can go to the 3D tab and choose Set Materials to convert my rectangle into a solid for simulation. I'll select the rectangle and set the material top to the thickness of the material. I'll also make sure Delete Original is checked before I click OK. I'll want to cut the wall scribe to finish size so I won't need to leave extra material. I will, however, need to leave extra material on the corners because I'll be following them with profile tools. So I'll choose to offset the arcs out, and I'll use a value of 0 0.06, which is about a sixteenth of an inch. And I'll choose only to offset the liner arc before I click OK and select each arc and set them to the outside. Next, I'll set tool direction on all four shapes. I'll go to the Machine tab, choose Tool Direction, and use my common settings, Left, Reverse, and No. And then I'll properly set it on all four of my open geometries. When I see that all four arrows are on the correct side, I can close Tool Direction. And now to cut my shape. I'll start by selecting my first tool, which is the finger bit, by double-clicking on the name, and then clicking somewhere to insert it into the drawing. Then I can choose Cut Shape and go through my settings. Vertical and Selected remain selected from my Types tab, and Machine Comp and Straight are still selected under General. This is also where I will find Auto Breakout Cut. I'll check the box to select it, and then I'm going to set the length of this cut to about 2 inches for this example. I'll use my normal settings under Levels and Cuts, and I'll leave a zero value under Stock to be left because we left it in the offset line. I'm going to increase the line length of my lead in and lead out. I'll use three times the tool radius, but it really depends on how much you oversize your material blank. There's nothing to change under Tool Data, so I'll press OK. Then I'll select the wall and the two offset radiuses to be cut. And when we finish to apply the cuts, check and verify to see that there's no interference. Here I see a conflict where the tool isn't going past the edge of my material. I can either edit the properties in my cut shape window or I can edit this lead. We'll see our extra cuts coming in from the opposite direction of our regular cuts. And then we can continue on and apply all our styles as normal. And when they're all finished, we can view our auto breakout cuts and our program in simulation. And we'll be able to see how the first cut goes in two inches in the opposite direction of the normal cut. And we can also see 
our conflicting area where the tool raises before it exits the material. These areas will need to be corrected before running the program. Thank you for watching. Now you know what I know. One more thing. Did you know that we have hundreds of resources available on our website for machine training and service? To find them, go to parkindustries.com. Thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thank you.